people. <laughs> Hi, one person. <laughs> Two. Welcome to Riverside Reptiles. Facebook Live <laughs> on our frogs. Seven, eight. Yay. Hi, everybody. Feel free to say hi to us and ask questions. This is Tara Lynn. And Gina's here too. And we are gonna teach you today about a couple of the different frogs that we have here at Riverside Reptiles Education Center. Uh, up first is going to be the White's Tree Frog. His name is Prince Charming. <laughs> and then we will also, sh he's a tree dwelling frog. And then we'll show you a ground dwelling frog, um, an African bullfrog. Thank you to everyone who has purchased a Zoom party or a membership, a sponsorship, or an outreach with us. Uh, if you're interested in any of those things, feel free to go to our website and learn more. But since we have a bunch of people now, I think we'll get started. Um, like I said, this is Prince Charming, and he is called a White's Tree Frog. So our first question is, what? Um, gave him the name White's Tree Frog. How did he get that name? Answer in the comments what you think gave him the name. And while we're waiting, Craig Murphy says hi. Oh, hey, Craig. <laughs> That's my buddy from college. Liam is here. Hi, Liam. Oh, Kayla's here. I'm, no, Kayla. Kayla Fuller. Oh, hey, Kayla. Miss you. <laughs> so does anybody know why he's called White's Tree Frog when he doesn't really look the color white? Kayla should know this. <laughs> <laughs> They're also known as the Australian Green Tree Frog and the Dumpy Frog and the Smiling Tree Frog. So Jim said the individual who discovered the frog um, that is correct, Jim. Yeah, and his name was John White. And John White was uh, an Irish surgeon and a botanical enthusiast. And while he was exploring um, different parts of Australia, looking for medicine and things to use in his practice, he discovered this frog back in 1790. And it was the first one to be discovered that they know of, well, at least scientifically um, researched and written about in Australia. Um, and just like we have tree frogs here and green frogs here in Australia, um, they're very common, um, and that's why they're known as the Australian tree frog. Um, if you can see his little toe pads, some frogs have webbed feet. He has webbed toes. So they have little uh, nuptial pads and that helps him when he is climbing or jumping uh, through the treetops. And they can also turn color. They can turn shades of brown and almost like a purpley color. And sometimes they will look blue. And if you notice when he just shut his eyes, they have those little um, fatty deposits above his eyes that make him always look sleepy. <laughs> I think he's so cute. He came to us from uh, the Glass and Berry Audis Audubon Society. And they ended up closing due to COVID, unfortunately. It was such a little gem in Glass and Berry. And two of their employees now work for us. And they made the connection happen. Um, these frogs are normally nocturnal. So if I hadn't woken him up, he would be... Um, if he was in the wild, he would be hiding in tree holes or tree crevices or resting possibly in a tree, um, a leaf puddle full of water. 
They're found throughout Australia, parts of Australia and New Guinea, and they're found high up in the treetops and the canopies. They only come down um, for mating purposes. And uh, Colin says they're chunky. Well, they, they are fed well here. <laughs> they are fed well here, and that's also how they got the name Dumpy Frog, because in captivity, sometimes they can put on a lot of weight, so it makes them look chubby. And they will eat insects, uh, they'll eat spiders, they'll even eat other frogs and mice as they get bigger. Uh, they can grow to be about three to five uh, inches long. And the female will actually lay uh, between 200 to 1,000 eggs twice a year. She usually finds a little uh, leaf puddle to deposit those eggs and they hatch within uh, three days, and the complete metamorphosis happens between two and three weeks. Does anyone, any kids out there know, what do they turn into from an egg? What do frogs turn into after they hatch? They don't look like this. What's a baby frog called? <laughs> It looks pretty comfortable. I know there might be a delay. Someone has to know what a baby frog is called. <laughs> Jim says a prince. A prince. <laughs> yeah, tadpoles from Liz. That's correct. Yeah, so they're tadpoles. And then when and they Liam start- Liam said tadpole too. When they start to sprout legs, um, my teacher used to say they were froglets. Oh, the other guys waiting to come out, I can hear them jumping and moving around. Um, they have a waxy coating on the outside of their body um, that helps them contain um, their moisture and hydration and prevents them from drying out, which is kind of neat. And it actually is um, being used for antiviral and antibacterial purposes. There's compounds within that um, secretion that is helping lower blood pressure and in staph um, infections, which is pretty neat. And they don't have to harm the frog to do it. In times of hardship and dryness, to prevent them from drying out, um, similar to the other frog we're going to take out, they will use a mucus layer and dead skin and cover themselves in it. And they'll go into a dormant um, time where almost like they're sleeping, they're resting, their body temperature goes down really low and it helps them um, to prevent them from drying out using their, their own sec secretions and mucus. So picture, um, spitting all over yourselves and then going to sleep all of summer until it gets cooler again. That is kind of what they do or until springtime. That's kind of gross, I think. And this is a tree dwelling species. So the name for it is arboreal, it means they're found up in the trees. Anybody here from Australia? I heard these guys are all over the place in Australia. Like people find them in their showers and toilets and stuff all the time. something we're definitely not used to up here. Yeah, they are very common. But they are being threatened due to some habitat loss. Um, and um, unfortunately, people are taking wild populations for the pet trade. But Someone wants to know what their heart rate at rest is. I'm not sure. I, don't know. I would have to Google that. Yeah. And since we're on live, I can't Google. So whoever that is, Google for us and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> His heart is beating, but he doesn't look too nervous. Usually, if they're nervous, they start um, walking or trying to jump. Um, I suspect he's sitting pretty calmly um, because he has been handled for programs in Glastonbury. Anybody have any other questions? Thanks for joining us today. Oh, Kayla says she has a friend from Australia, and yeah, they do see them all the time. Cool, very interesting. 
although his name is Prince Charming, um, he has not turned into a prince. I'm still looking for mine. Gina found hers. <laughs> Anybody know what might be predators besides man? What might prey on these guys? That will be our last question before we take out the next guy. Um, and then someone's wondering, how about their chirps? Oh, they do make um, bark-like noises, and they'll bark for mating to attract a mate. They'll, they have a threatening call, and then they also make a call when it rains, um, and they're happy. Um, Gina was missing him the other day, and he was making a call, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it was because of the rain, <laughs> the mist that she was doing, or if it was a threatening um, call because of her opening his enclosure. I think he was enjoying it. I think he was, too. Um, somebody said birds would be a predator. Absolutely. Yep, birds, for sure. snakes, and possibly larger frogs. Yeah, definitely. Is that what they said? Yep. All of those? Perfect. Yep. yep. All of those things. And then, of course, man. And then cats and dogs are another one that. And do we know how them. do we know how old Prince Charming is? I'm not sure. Um, we can answer that in the comments because one of the girls that worked with him is here. She might know the answer to that. Someone suggests that you should maybe try giving him a kiss. <laughs> is that Murphy? Craig Murphy that uh, said that? No, it's Bonnie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Bonnie Somerville. Is she the one answering? Scoville. Oh, Scoville. Yeah. That's it. Hi, Bonnie. I think you're the one that gave us um, the venison for Brenda. Thanks again. Um, they live to be 15 to 20 years. So um, I guess I have 20 years of hoping he'll turn into a prince, Bonnie. <laughs> so I'm going to put him away. Gina, you have the Yeah, we'll watch him hang out in his little travel carrier while we get our next creature feature. Who's this guy? So this is Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> and he is an African bullfrog. Um, he's the second largest frog um, in the world. Does anyone know the largest frog species in the world? He's one of three African bullfrogs that we have here. Anyone know? Anybody know? Oh, here he is walking. What species is the largest frog? This is an African bullfrog. This is the what? Second largest? The second largest. Yep. Anybody know what the first largest is? Goliath frog. Who said that, Jim? Craig. Oh, Craig. Yeah, my buddy Craig Murphy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. The Goliath frog is the largest frog in the world. Um, they can grow to be about seven pounds or more and 12 and a half inches long. So that's as big as some cats can get. This guy over here, he only grows to be about nine or 10 inches and he grows to be a little over two pounds. I guess it's gonna make me hold him. Uh, so these frogs are found throughout um, some of the hottest areas in Africa, actually, the Sub-Saharan. So they are considered the most adaptable amphibian uh, on the planet. They can survive extreme temperatures of 100 degrees um, and they can also su survive some freezing temperatures. Um, they're found throughout parts of South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania. They're found in the Sudan, Nigeria. So a lot of those places get extremely hot. 
so um, what he does is sim similar to what the white tree frog does. He would cover himself in his own mucus layers and skin cells, and he would bury himself underground. Um, and they can stay underground for almost a year, uh, and they uh, go into what's called it's estivation. So it's similar to hibernation, um, except it's during extreme heat and high temperatures. Um, and they use um, something on the back of their leg um, to dig the holes. Um, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't say it wrong. A tubercle on their hind legs to dig burrows. Um, but the juvenile um, frogs do not have these, so they have to find abandoned burrows to use during times of hardship. And I don't know if you can see, but he kind of looks puffed up. Let me see. When he's down on the ground, he doesn't look as puffed up, but when I pick him up, he's trying to let me know, hey, I'm bigger, leave me alone. He's not cooperating with me today. So his cheek pouches, or well, not really his cheeks, but his belly kind of puffs up um, and he's making himself look larger as a threat posture. And most of the time, if you can see where his eyes and his nose are, he would stay um, partially, under, partially underground, almost submerged, or at the edge of a little body of water during the rainy season. And he would just wait for something to come by and then he would gobble them up. So maybe something will come down and get a drink and that's the last time that they get a drink because he'd gobble them up. What do you think he likes to eat? I wanna get some close-ups but I'm afraid he's gonna to try to eat your phone. What do you think this frog likes to eat? Then we can get a close up at his feet too, because they look different. And Prince Charming. Anyone know what he would eat? No one? <laughs> Do you guys think he's a picky eater? Well, basically, if he can fit it in his mouth, he would eat it. And when I do preschool shows, they always tell me bugs. And I always say, well, while he might eat some bugs, it's not something that would always fill him up. He would have to exert a lot of energy to catch a lot of bugs. So that would be like you and I eating an M&M. We probably wouldn't want to eat only one M&M. We'd probably want to eat the whole bag. So he eats larger things like mice and birds, other frogs. I'm gonna try and feed him. Maybe that will. I'm sure you can, but there. He's gonna get a cockroach. Yeah, here at the center, he gets a mouse at least once a week. And. So close. Getting a little insect snack. Oh, so close. <laughs> he does have tiny, there he goes. <laughs> if you notice when he did that, he shut his eyes. So he uses his eyes to help push the food back. They're muscular. And that cockroach um, had just molted. So that's why it was white. That would be easier for me to see does have tiny little tooth-like projections in the front of his mouth. So if he did bite, it would hurt. She brought 
forceps. His aim's a little off. I think the aim is off because the floor, the carpeting looks kind of like it. Does anybody have any questions? While we're watching the game? Or trying to eat? I will not hand feed him. cockroach knows to stop moving <laughs> so frogs usually need movement to um, get them motivated to try and grab something to eat so when the cockroach doesn't move the frog is not inspired to try to bite it <laughs> One more try and then we'll... A lot of people ask me if he's going to hop. And a lot of times he won't hop. He'll walk. Um, and they make... There, go. there he goes. Um, they make kind of like a barking noise too. Sometimes it sounds like a dog um, when I take him on programs. He'll be in his container and he sounds like a dog. Um, you can see his feet. And toes pretty good here yeah so some bullfrogs that we have around here have webbed feet and toes um he doesn't so if you look his toes look completely different um they almost look like little um fingers and those be those are because he lives primarily on the ground there's not a lot of water um in the dry season especially and if he's trying to get underground webbed feet would not help him at all they would almost hinder him do we know how old this guy is? Oh, I can answer that again. I forgot to bring my, my sheet. Brian has so many animals, it's hard for us to remember how old everyone is. I think I'll hold him again for you. Someone asked when we feed them a mouse, are they alive? No, they are not. And we always use forceps for putting food close to their face so that our fingers don't accidentally get bitten. No one has asked how old they can live, but they can live to be about 45 years old. Um, they're uh, one of the um, longest lived amphibians, which is kind of neat. And does this guy have a name? Did we already say that? Um, Job of the Hut. And then we also have two others. Job of the Hut was the first African bullfrog I worked with at the Children's Museum. Brian worked there too. If there's anyone out there watching from the Children's Museum, I named him after, after that one. Oh, and I was thinking it was after a Star Wars character. Oh, well, yeah, he also kind of <laughs> looks like Jabba the Hutt, I think. <laughs> well, if no one has any other questions, this might be a good spot to end since he's getting a little antsy. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you purchased a membership, thanks again, or a sponsorship. Um, if you have it and you want to sponsor one of our animals, it's still up on our Facebook um, or our website. You can also do a Zoom program or have us come to your house for a birthday party. There are a little um, restrictions that we have to follow. And, and we are also busy working every day, getting the center yes. closer to <laughs> opening. We just have a couple more exhibits that we have to build out for the cobra and the reticulated pythons. But we are here every day working hard. So if you know any teachers that want to do a Zoom with us that aren't going back to school um, or are going back to school and need to do um, hybrid um, models and send virtual programs, reach out to us and I can help you. This could be one of the guys that the students see. And thanks again. Have a great day, everybody. Stay, stay safe.